What's up guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be looking at a product from Kingston and this is their iron key. So this is a private vault. You're going to keep your data encrypted on this portable SSD. Sounds pretty cool, right? So we got the 480 gig model. Uh, Kingston did provide this to the show to review, but this is my own opinion. They have not uh, reviewed or altered this video in any way. So we've got the iron key solution from Kingston. Again, keeping your data secure is becoming more and more of a thing these days, right? Especially if you're a business, right? You don't want your customer's data, especially if it's sensitive, you know, like uh, personal health, personal information, financial information. Um, you know, I already said health, um, but uh, yeah, and your data today is almost as like more valuable than cash, especially with inflation, right? So what people are doing is they're seeing a lot of identity theft, ransomware, where they will encrypt your data and keep it and charge you a ransom to get it back. So more and more people are looking forward to ways of protecting their data. Well, you're carrying something with you. That's pretty much like if you get it stolen, you lose it, well, that's pretty much just giving somebody your data, right? And depending on what you keep on there, whether it's your work, whether it's your personal uh, stuff, even uh, photography, you know, you don't want people looking at your private pictures, anything like that, right? So this is a great solution from Kingston. Again, it's the Iron Key series. This is a Volt Privacy 80ES, which is hardware encrypted SSD. Okay, it's user friendly, uh, intuitive touch screen, and multi password, 256 bit AES XTS encryption, and it's OS independent, <clears throat> meaning you don't have to tie this down to an OS to manage it. Okay, you don't need to install software on a Mac or a Windows device to actually manage this and access your data. So that's very, very cool. Again, Kingston, Iron Key, let's look at the back. Engineered for superior data protection compared to software encryption and cloud storage. So um, let's go ahead and just dive into the actual box. It says here what we're going to find is the vault, the travel case, and a couple cables and a quick start guide. So there you go. That's what's in the box. So let's go ahead and pop this open. Again, we've got the 480 gig version. You can get this in several different versions, sizes, I guess I should say. So there's our vault, our travel case, our cables, and our quick start guide. And some, some additional drink additives for later. All right, so here's our little travel case. Iron key, very, very nice. Um, let's go ahead and pop it open. Got the blue motif going on here that matches the, the case. Blue and black. Ooh, look at that. That's not pretty. I mean, one thing you're going to notice right out of the get go is if you saw this picture, maybe you thought these were actual buttons. No, it's a screen. How cool is that? So that means. Well, yeah, it means if this doesn't have power, you're not getting into it, right? Because obviously you don't have any buttons to push. But also, a lot of times these buttons that are physical, you can heat, heat uh, trace them, right? So if I go up to an ATM or any device, grocery store, I'm checking out and I put in my pin, somebody can walk by with those little thermal cameras anymore and skimmers or even a scanner to pull your data from those cards you just broadcast. Uh, and actually uh, show where you last pushed. So they'll know your pin because your heat signature is still there. And of course the hottest one was the last one and the coldest one was the first one. So this gets away from physical buttons, which is kind of a cool thing, right? So here's what we got. We've got a USB-C up top and wow, it is a vault. That's it. That's all you've got. There, 480 gig. And a USB-C cable. That's it. So what is it? It's not OS dependent, but it is power dependent. So you're going to have to have some kind of source of power to access your data. And this will work 
with your standard bus power of most devices. And we'll test this out. What do you want to test it on? Well, we'll maybe do a traditional laptop. So we'll bring over our MacBook Pro and we'll try it out on that. And mm, I don't think we're going to do it on an iPhone because we've got USB-C. So let's try it on an iPad. Let's see what we get. So we'll pause the video. We get the MacBook over here. We'll do that first, and then we'll see how this actually behaves on a MacBook. And this is an M1. All right, just to give you an, an update. So let's bring that MacBook in. We'll be right back. All right, guys, welcome back. So we're going to go ahead and plug in our Iron Key Volt. And what you'll see is the self-test is being ran. And it should come up here. Loading. Tap with precision. So this is a touch screen. And there you go. It's wanting my password. So I'm going to take it off camera and I'm going to enter my password. Now we've got options of connect and read only, so we're going to connect. It's unlocked and connected. And boom, my MacBook now sees it and brings it up as a Kingston drive. And if I want to back up to it, I can. So I'll just say not now. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the screen. Now you can see here I've got lock, disconnect. Those are my options. Lock and disconnect. All right, but it's reading. I can go to this drive, so if I bring up Finder, I go to my Kingston drive, I've got a couple files on here that came with it. It's a privacy PDF and a Kingston digital encryption key PDF. So it's basically the manual for this device in that form. So how cool is that, that we now have our drive connected with the ability to do this. Now I'm just going to say lock and disconnect. So now the device is locked and it's obviously now it says it's not ejected properly so oops should have done that first and then you can basically unlock and power off again as the options on here. Now I am logged in as the admin of this device. What does that mean? So you can actually now I'm going to give you a couple more features here. This is FIPS 197 compliant. It has common criteria EAL 5 plus certified secure microprocessor to protect against drive tampering. So if someone tries to tear this apart, uh, it is encrypted when I lock it. And so is the key, which means you can tamper all you want. This isn't, no one's going to get to this data and decrypt it. Now, again, this is powering from the, the serial or the bus port, so the requirement is 5 volt minimum and 1 amp of current from the USB port. So if your USB port doesn't provide 1 amp, um, probably not going to work, all right? And that's usually on the older stuff. Now, you saw the keys. Now, I had mentioned about not having a, a heat signature, right? So the, pow uh, the randomized keys, you can do that on this. And that's to prevent smudge attacks, which basically I would have fingerprint smudges only on the keys that my password is, right? So that prevents that. Also prevents sneak peeks. Somebody looking over your shoulder sees your code. Hopefully, now it, your passwords on this can be 6 to 64. If you're doing 6, that's pretty easy to memorize from a sneak peek. Uh, 64, anything like 15, I don't, know, up, I don't know. If you're over 3, my memory's shot, so I, I can't remember it. But anyway... Um, and then also, the thermal imaging negates the heat signature because you're randomizing your keys. So the next time it comes up, it's going to be a different, different spot. So that's very, very cool. Uh, this comes formatted in EXFAT, so it does work out of the box with Mac and Windows, Linux, Chrome, basically anything that's going to support EXFAT. Uh, now, you can reformat it. You can do it into NTFS, you can do it into FAT32 if you need larger files, whatever. You can do that. You can set users on this with the admin menu. Alright, so now you don't want to, you want to give this to somebody, alright, to use. 
You can set a user account. You can give it a unique password. When you log in, it's going to say admin or user. They would click user, they'd put in their password, and they would get access to the data. That's pretty darn cool. You could also give them read-only. So you could put this in a read-only mode for that user, give it to them, because maybe you, you don't want them to plug it into a computer and maybe get malware or viruses onto your drive. So you can give that to the user with their password in a read-only mode. So that's really, really neat. Um, you can set the maximum number of password retries on this. So um, basically, you know, if you want them to not brute force this, I think the default's 15, and that's admin and user, so if they tried to do uh, one or the other, it's cumulative. So if they're trying to break into the admin as the user, they're going to count. So if you put it at 5, boom, it locks out the account. Okay, so you're not going to be able to brute force this for a while. Secure crypto erase, including keys and the data. So if this is compromised in any way or anything, you can securely erase it. Um, and then basically it's like a format, but it is a crypto erase. And then again, you can set the auto lock. So this will be auto lock if it's just sitting here. Uh, anywhere from 5 minutes to 12 hours, you can set the auto lock on this bad boy. So uh, pretty darn cool. Again, we can unlock it. It's ready for the password. If you want, you can push the little button here and show your password. So I'm just hitting the ones, or you can have it actually not show you the password. Turn that off, and now it's just asterisks or pluses. Looks like asterisks. And just to make sure, I'll put in the wrong password. Enter. And hopefully it comes, yeah, incorrect password. 14 of 15. So you can actually see that I am entering the wrong password. Now, you probably want to see the admin menu. So let's go ahead. I told you I'd try an iPad, iPad OS, which it should work, but we're going to take it to the iPad right after this, and I'll show you the admin menu real quickly on this here so you can actually control all of the admin functions on this key screen. Again, independent of any OSs or any software, everything's got like three admin screens. Basically, it's in the settings, and you just go in here and you can edit whatever you want to turn on and off all the features that I've mentioned. Okay, so you can make it your own uh, for your own personal security and preferences, which is really, really cool. So we'll be right back, guys. All right, we're plugged into this iPad. Now, interesting enough, this iPad has the Magic Keyboard, and it would not work through the Magic Keyboard's port. Let me enter my password. Again, these keys are random. All right, so we're going to go into admin mode. Now, files. This will see my device. So we are good. Um, so change password, set user, read-only mode, password rules, password length, password counter, randomized light key layout, auto lock time, brightness language, and secure erase, touch calibration, and touch sounds. All of that. We're going to connect and put this down. And there is my device on the iPad. How cool is that? Let's go ahead and bring up the manual. Boom. Encrypted file on this drive on an iPad. There you go. So cool. Kingston's Iron Key. Check it out. I'll have a link in the show notes where you can pick one up. Go read about it. Hopefully I've gone over most of the data for you. Covered it all. Um, definitely a very cool device. I'll give it a thumbs up. And maybe you should too. If you like this video, give that a like. Hit that notification bell. Subscribe to the show and help us out. I'm trying to grow the channel. I'm trying to bring you quality content like this from Kingston. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and have a good one.